One of the first blog posts I ever wrote was about using marigolds to control root knot nematodes. So these are little little worms that are in the ground. They're they're almost microscopic, but once they get into a root, like a carrot or a beet or something like that, they disfigure the root, and uh, you really can't eat them anymore. So this was one of these uh, companion planting ideas that everyone was raving about. You know, you put your marigolds there, and they stop the the nematodes from getting to the roots. And so what I like to do with these things is actually find some science behind this. Yes. And I did find a study where they looked at this quite thoroughly. And what they found was, first of all, it depends on which marigold species you're looking at. So gardeners like to call all marigolds the same, but the scientists know that there's, there's different species and they have different properties. So you have to use the right species with the right nematode. Right? Oh. And of course, us gardeners, we don't even know what kind of nematodes we have. So first thing you have to get your nematodes analyzed, then you have to get the right species. The second thing that's really important is that the, the marigolds have to grow in the same spot as the root crop. So what this means is you have to plant the marigolds and you grow them for two or three months. Then you pull them out and put the root crop in exactly the same row. If they're a foot away, it won't work. They have to be in the same row. And the way this works is that the nematodes really can't tell the difference between the marigold and, and your food crop. And so they go into the marigold, but they can't reproduce in there. So there's something chemically inside the roots that prevent them from reproducing. So essentially the population density goes down because they're all in this marigold and then you pull the marigold out and get rid of them and now the soil has a very low population and you you plant your your food crop well the problem with that is you need a long growing season right you have to have two crops you first do the marigolds and then you do your root crop so in most of north america this isn't really going to work because our climate's too short so this is one where the conclusion is that it works if you do it correctly and it works only in warmer climates where you have enough right. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this idea of putting marigolds near things is another one. So, uh, you know, you plant them next to your crop and it's, it's a target plant for insects. So the insects go over to your marigolds and leave your, your food crop alone. And most of the studies show that that doesn't really work very well. Uh, there's lots of insects that go on marigolds. Yes. But what happens is they actually pull those insects in from areas outside your garden. Oh. So you get a higher number of pests in your garden. Oh, it's right? a dinner bell. It's a dinner bell. And in <laughs> fact, they're, they're really bad for thrips. So you might have a garden with no thrips and you put in your marigolds and suddenly you have a big thrip population. And a lot of them will be on your marigolds, but they also go on other food crops. So it, <laughs> it, isn't, it isn't solving a problem. Like it, no. it does attract thrips, but it, it doesn't really solve the problem. So planting marigolds with your food crops don't really work except for the root rot nematode and right. you do it correctly. Right. I, um, for years, uh, I had a garden the difference between, I can say to anyone, the difference between having a garden in suburbs and a garden on the edge of a forest, it's a fundamentally different kind of ecosystem. And I used to live in a suburb and for years I would put a marigold in every corner of every garden bed. And I didn't have any problems with anything, didn't have to use anything. And I thought, no, oh, it's the marigolds, they're preventing everything. And then when I moved here, I put marigolds in my garden and slugs destroyed them, ate them right down to nothing. <laughs> just destroyed them and I all these I mean I'm talking for like I don't know five years I thought marigolds were this like magic plant that just sent a smell out that kept like a like a forest field around the garden mm -hmm. I literally set them up in each corner like yeah. a forest field yeah and it was all just me believing something that wasn't true <laughs> you know I really I just didn't have a, I did not have a pest problem in yeah. the other garden and so they, they weren't solving anything there wasn't a thing to solve when I got to a place where I had problems to solve, like where I am, because I have flea beetles. I mean, the biggest problems I have 
are things early in season that attack seedlings, slug yeah. snails and flea beetles. Yeah. And cutworm, but cutworm never seemed to, you know, if you've got, you know, if you plant 12 tomatoes, two of them get it and the rest of them are okay. You know, like they don't seem to take everything yeah. for me anyway. Yeah. Um, but uh, flea beetles and slugs will take everything. <laughs> <laughs> Hey folks, guess what? I've started a newsletter at maritimegardening.substack.com. I'll be putting out one article a week, that's 52 articles a year. The articles expand the ideas that I mention on my videos and podcasts. And every article has a read aloud option, so you can just listen to me read it if you're busy doing something else. You can subscribe for $30 a year or try it for 5 bucks a month and see what you think. It's a great way to help support everything I'm doing here. But hey, there's also free content too, so if you just want to read the free stuff, that's fine too. As always, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.